Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game that was played two days ago uh, in the fourth annual Play Live Challenge where Magnus Carlsen, World Chess Champion, takes on uh, 12 opponents simultaneously. So it's a simultaneous exhibition, uh, as the word suggests, and it's very interesting how I came upon this game. Now, uh, I just, uh, you know, woke up as I usually do and uh, I went uh, on Twitter to check out if there are any, you know, uh, important news in the chess world. Uh, and I saw this tweet by Daniel King. Uh, he said, you played a great game. And I was like, uh, who, who played a great game? And uh, against who did he play it? Uh, then I saw this uh, Christoph Rotwilm. I decided to click on it. So I clicked on uh, Christoph Rotwilm. Uh, and I saw that it was, in fact, uh, a game against Magnus Carlsen. He was uh, one of the contenders of the simultaneous exhibition. Uh, and then I wrote him a message uh, via tw Twitter. I asked him, uh, did you indeed play uh, a great game? And he said, yeah, it was a nice game, you know, uh, and I asked him to send me the PGN if, uh, if, if it indeed was a nice game, uh, not, the, not like the one against uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold, as uh, <laughs> I so really didn't enjoy this one, but this one uh, was, was very enjoyable. Uh, so it was played in uh, Hamburg in Germany. Uh, here you have um, uh, the playing hall. There you have 12 chess boards, uh, a lot of room for the audience. Uh, there were cameras. Uh, you know, official commentators. Daniel King was the, one of the official commentators, uh, and uh, you know, uh, one of one of his opponents was uh, Mr. Uh, Christoph Rotwilm. Uh, he's a 49-year-old uh, journalist. Uh, uh, he's been playing chess since he was a teenager. Uh, he's working for uh, the uh, Manager magazine, uh, as he says it. His it, it's the uh, biggest uh, business uh, magazine in Germany, and uh, he faces the world chess champion Magnus Carlsen. So let's see uh, how he did. Uh, we have knight to f3. Carlsen, of course, has the white pieces, as he who holds a simultaneous exhibition always has the white pieces. Uh, we have d5, so the reti opening is on the board, and c4. Carlsen offers uh, the reti gambit. Uh, while you can capture uh, on c4, it doesn't really gain anything for black. White will simply play e3, go to pick up this pawn, and you will not be able to defend it, uh, or you will run into a4 and uh, face a similar problems as, as you would, uh, for example, in queen's gambit accepted. Uh, when you're trying to defend the c4 pawn. Uh, so after d5, we have uh, c4, like we've said, and now e6, uh, declining the reti gambit, and now comes b3. Carlsen transposes into the English opening. Uh, we have the Agincourt defense on the board. Uh, knight to f6, uh, we have bishop to b2. Now comes c5, a very nice move. Uh, and now e3, not allowing black to, to push this pawn any further with, d, with the d4. Uh, bishop to e7, and now comes uh, c captures on d5. We have e captures on d5, and now d4. And with this move, Carlsen uh, places his pawns on dark squares. This light square bishop can now enter the game, and when these two pawns get exchanged, then his dark square bishop will also come alive. So, uh, a very nice developing move. Uh, we have b6. Uh, Mr. Christoph also wants to develop his own light square bishop via bishop to b7. Uh, and Carlsen goes bishop to b5. This comes with check. So obviously you have to block this either with uh, knight, knight bd7 or via bishop to d7 or you can move the king. Moving the king, moving the king isn't uh, all that great of a move, so he simply blocks it with the bishop. Carlsen exchanges, bishop captures, we have knight captures, also uh, develops a piece, so very nice for black. Uh, we have castles, castles and the knight to c3. Carlsen develops a pawn, uh, develops a piece, uh, and rook to c8. Black simply keeps developing. Uh, D captures on c5. We have knight captures on c5. You usually want to capture towards the center, but then you're, you left your uh, d5 pawn hanging as the knight and queen are attacking it. So you do have to capture with the knight. Uh, we have knight captures on c5 and now rook to c1. And uh, now Carlsen uh, managed to create an isolated pawn that black has on d5. It's, uh, uh, it's a weakness. Uh, not immediately, but uh, you will have to, you know, spend the entire game trying to defend it. As black now has three pawn islands, white has two pawn islands. So if you imagine all of the pieces of the board and only consider the pawns and the kings, uh, white would have a better pawn structure and thus the better end game. Uh, so rook to e8. Um, we have uh, a nice rook rook development by uh, Mr. Christoph Rotwilm. Uh, queen to e2, Carlsen also develops the queen and uh, prepares to bring his other rook into the game. Also, if this knight moves, perhaps the queen can uh, be used to harass the queen side. Uh, knight to e6, and uh, at the time he played this move, he said he felt very, very good. He felt confident in his position and uh, that he enjoyed the position very much. 
uh, rook f to d1. Now, uh, a move like uh, queen to a6 would be very funny because now you can simply repeat knight to c5 and the queen has to go back. Uh, if you capture, then you lose the queen, uh, simply rook to a8, and the knight is covering b7, and the queen is covering b6. So the queen would be trapped here. Uh, so Carlsen develops the rook, rook f to d1, and here we have bishop to b4. Uh, here, uh, it's not uh, all that simple to figure out a plan for black. Uh, you might want to go for something like queen d7, rook c7, and try to get the other rook to c8, perhaps uh, exchange rooks along the, the open c file. Uh, but Kristoff um, uh, said that he didn't feel that this bishop to b4 move was... Uh, uh, that there was anything wrong with it, and in fact there there isn't uh, there there is nothing wrong with it, but uh, it Carlsen does take advantage of it by playing knight to b5, uh, now attacking d a7 pawn, and now Black has to decide what to do. And okay, rook captures on c1. First you exchange uh, a pair of rooks. Rook captures on c1, and now a5. Uh, an excellent move by Christoph because if you try something like a6 to protect your pawn with tempo, seemingly attacking the knight, uh, then knight to a7 would be. A uh, bit of a problem for black, as now you're threatening some ideas with rook to c8, uh, but also opening up a discovered attack uh, from your queen to the pawn here. So not really uh, something you want to do. So instead of uh, a6, a5 immediately. Now knight to a7 doesn't really make sense, as there is no threat against the a6 pawn, and uh, bishop to c5 will simply uh, block off the fa this uh, uh, file for the, for the rook. Uh, so after a5, we have queen to d1. Uh, and now comes uh, knight to e4. Uh, a very nice idea, as uh, black could at some point capture on f6, and then uh, white could capture on f6, and black would have to decide uh, whether he wants to capture with the queen and keep his pawn structure intact, or he would, uh, but then lose the d5 pawn, or ruin his pawn structure uh, on the king side and uh, keep defending the pawn. So knight comes to e4. Uh, and now comes h3. Uh, Carlsen makes some room for his king, you never know what could happen. Uh, queen to d7, a very nice move, comes with an attack against this knight on b5 and also threatening, uh, not threatening, but preparing rook to c8 to exchange the last pair of rooks. Uh, knight bd4 by Carlsen and now rook to c8. Again, an excellent decision by Kristoff uh, as uh, capturing the knight here would, uh, would be bad for black. If you capture, then queen captures, you threaten checkmate here. Uh, as the queen is eyeing the g7 pawn, and also uh, once you stop uh, checkmate, perhaps with bishop to f8 or something, uh, then queen captures on b6, simply wins a pawn. Uh, so after knight bd4, we have rook to c8, offering a rook trade, and now knight to e5, attacking uh, Christoph's queen on d7. Uh, Christoph plays uh, rook captures on c1, Carlsen recaptures, queen captures on c1, and now comes queen to c7, offering a queen trade. And Carlsen accepts, why wouldn't he? Uh, queen captures, knight captures, and now comes knight d to c6. Uh, attacking the bishop here. And here with bishop to c3, uh, you would uh, force uh, a trade of bishops, and it would be very hard to create something here. For example, bishop captures, knight captures, attacking d a2 pawn, you have to play a4. And uh, now black would still have this uh, isolated pawn on, uh, on d5, but with four knights on the board it would be a, <laughs> a very happy game. Uh, so instead, after, uh, instead of this bishop to c3, Christoph goes to bishop to c5. And okay, also playable, uh, we have knight to d7 by Carlsen, attacking the bishop once again. Uh, and here we have f6. Uh, knight captures on c5, knight captures on c5, and now bishop to a3. A very sneaky move by Carlsen that is uh, that aims uh, at this knight captures on a5 move, at, uh, uh, and after pawn captures it will leave the c5 knight undefended. Uh, but um, it could have easily been prevented. For example, after this bishop attacks knight, knight to e4, and now the bishop on a3 is very awkwardly placed. Uh, because if the knight comes to c3, then you will have no way of uh, defending your a2 pawn as the bishop is blocking it from uh, being pushed to a4 and the knight cannot defend it via knight to b4 as the pawn is guarding the b4 square. So knight to e4, a very nice reply uh, to this bishop to a3 move. Uh, but uh, here I will show you this photo just uh, so you would um, get a better impression. Not that one, we already saw that one, uh, but this one. Uh, here you can see that uh, Christoph was the last one uh, left playing uh, the simultaneous exhibition, everyone else finished their games, uh, and then everyone, the cameras, the lights, the audience, everyone was watching his game against Carlsen, and Carlsen had a uh, <laughs> had a chair brought over so he could sit and play the game. And uh, here he said, as, as a chess amateur, he felt uh, very uncomfortable. There you have <laughs> Grandmaster Daniel King to the left, uh, also uh, watching the game. 
so a bit much to take uh, to take for an amateur and he said that he really uh, felt nervous here and that he thought uh, that he would have to give up at least one of the pawns here he didn't uh, find this knight to e4 idea he he thought that he would either face a bishop captures here and then knight captures here or knight captures here immediately and then bishop captures here uh, so uh, he decided to, to give up a pawn he played king to f7 although we so we we mentioned that knight to e4 keeps the pawn uh, and now comes knight captures on a5 uh, you don't want to recapture then you get bishop captures on c5 and uh, now you simply have a bishop against the knight where carlson would be up a pawn uh, not something you want to uh, not something you want to uh, do uh, so after knight captures on a5, now he plays knight to a4, and now knight to c3 is still a very nice idea as the a2 pawn will not be uh, protected, uh, but here Carlsen plays knight to c6. We have knight to c3 attacking the a2 pawn, but now comes knight to b4. As there is no more pawn on a5 to keep the knight away from b4, now the knight is simply protecting the a2 pawn. Here Carlsen is up a pawn, and uh, well, it's it's a very difficult position for black. Uh, not not likely that uh, Christoph will be able to defend this. Uh, so here he said uh, he was already down a pawn. He didn't feel all that great, and still everyone was watching his game. You know the cameras, the uh, <laughs> the official commentator, and everything. Uh, and he played d4. His idea was pawn captures and the knight to e to check, uh, winning back the pawn, and then perhaps uh, continuing from there. Uh, but Carlson uh, saw that this doesn't happen. He played uh, a better move that uh, makes this d4 uh, move. Uh, bad for black, uh, he played bishop to b2, and now it's a problem, uh, now knight to e2 check doesn't really do anything, king f1, and there's really nothing to do, you have to go back to c3, uh, and uh, you cannot capture or push d3, because your knight on c3 would be hanging, so here king to e6 was played, uh, king to f1 by, by Carlsen, uh, knight 3 to d5, and only now knight captures on d5, King captures and now bishop captures on d4. Here Carlsen is up two pawns and now there's really nothing to do here. Uh, we have b5, uh, king to e2, uh, we have f5 now. This is uh, just giving up a pawn but uh, at this point he already decided to resign. So Carlsen captured on g7 and now being up three pawns. Uh, Mr. Christoph Rothwilm resigned the game uh, and uh, unmoved 36 Carlsen uh, won this game. Uh, but uh, a very nice game, and uh, uh, all up until this moment where uh, king to f7 was played. So, like we said, instead of king to f7, uh, simply knight to e4, uh, questioning Carlsen's a3 move, bringing the knight to c3, and then attacking the undefended a2 pawn. Here, Carlsen would have to move the bishop back, and then you can just move the knight back, and Carlsen would have to figure out another plan. Carlsen would, of course, find another plan and win this game, but uh, perhaps he would have to work harder for his meal. Uh, but yeah, a very nice game, uh, lasting 27 moves uh, without being worse against the world champion, uh, an excellent showing by uh, by Christoph Rothwilm. Uh, here we also have um, a nice photo after all of the games were finished, Carlsen handed his uh, uh, playing set, the play Magnus Chess, uh, to all of the contenders, and here is a nice photo of uh, Magnus Carlsen and all of the contenders. Uh, that uh, were playing this uh, simultaneous exhibition, uh, the fourth annual Play Live Challenge. So yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, a much better showing than that one that we've seen from uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold. So uh, really, congratulations to Christoph uh, on this excellent game. Uh, I have no idea how the other contenders uh, finished uh, you know, their games. Uh, as uh, I checked uh, the Play Magnus uh, Twitter profile, the Magnus Carlsen's uh, personal profile, uh, no one said anything about the result uh, of this simultaneous exhibition. Uh, but perhaps I just missed it somewhere. Uh, they did an Announce that a short video will be available soon so perhaps they will announce it there uh, but yeah uh, that's the game I do hope you enjoyed it uh, you know certainly a wonderful experience for mr. Christoph Rothwilm uh, surely he enjoyed it very much uh, I would like to thank Yosef uh, Hamoda and Daniel Garcia for your contribution to my channel thank you a lot I really appreciate it uh, as usual you can check to my previous videos here thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon uh, hopefully with another interesting uh, uh, video and uh, most likely continuing the Bobby Fischer series. And also I would like to mention that Mr. Christoph Rothwilm uh, plays Unleeches under uh, the nickname Master Lee. Uh, I will put uh, that as uh, well as some other interesting uh, information in the description below. So feel free to check it out. Uh, thank you all and I'll see you soon.